what is going on guys today is a special day because we're in houston and it's snowing dude so i figured what better day to talk about how the transfer case works than today when we can go do some spinny boys in an empty parking lot let's get started it's 28 degrees outside it says it feels like 11. i'm not even sure it's going to start sounding a little rough but start up first time so a little side note for you fifth gen owners um, a lot of people don't know a lot of people don't know what that button right there is for that heats the area where your windshield wipers are at so that uh, they don't freeze you can get rid of that ice at the bottom of your windshield now if I had to choose between driving the fifth gen the Jeep Wrangler or the third gen in snowy weather 100% the third gen every time and the reason for that is because the 1999 and the 2000 third gen forerunners have all-wheel drive and I'm picking all-wheel drive over rear-wheel drive because traction is everything when you're driving in snow so let's go talk about this transfer case so before we get too crazy and start doing too many spinning boys out here in this church parking lot and I potentially get a ticket, let's go over the important information in this video. Keep in mind, you don't ever wanna drive in four wheel drive on pavement, okay? We can go in all wheel drive when we're on snow or ice or some rain or during normal daily driving. It's not really necessary to be in all wheel drive during normal daily driving because you're just basically getting the same amount of traction and using extra gasoline um, and you're just really killing your gas mileage at that point but if there's any snow rain ice um, all-wheel drive is where it's at however if you're off-roading all-wheel drive isn't going to really help you so for normal everyday driving your button is not pressed and your shifter is going to be in high two that's basically rear wheel drive and an unlocked differential rear differential and if you have four-wheel drive you'll have that little thingy bob right there and that's not going to be lit it's not going to be flashing center button's not going to be lit nothing now if you want to engage all-wheel drive you just select did you guys hear that click that was the electronic actuators for the front drive shaft and now all four wheels are lit but if you'll notice the center circle is not lit and that means that you're driving in four high with an unlocked or an open center differential, which is basically all wheel drive. Now, if I click it again, it should disengage. I have to move it, put it in drive, here it disengage. All right, it's disengaged. Now, if you wanna to go to four wheel drive, you go to neutral and pull down now you are in high four locked meaning that when you shift this you have locked your center diff and you'll notice now you've got a light on that little circle in the center meaning that you are not in all-wheel drive you are in four-wheel drive which is four high with a locked center differential now moving on still in neutral of course now we are in four low still locked and in this mode, we can go ahead and use a locking rear differential. So the biggest differentiating factor between all wheel drive and four wheel drive is both of them are four high, but the difference is in four wheel drive, the center differential is locked. So your front drive shaft and your rear drive shaft will always spin at the same rate. However, with all wheel drive, you have an open center differential, which means that your front and rear drive shafts could potentially spin at different rates depending on where you have traction that's why all-wheel drive is not great for driving off-road because if you lose traction then that's the wheel that's going to spin whereas when you're in four-wheel drive your front and rear drive shafts are going to spin at the same rate now you can still lose traction but if you have a locker then that forces both the left and right wheels to spin at the same rate as well so even if one of your wheels loses traction they will both continue to spin so in the more modern vehicles that have a system like a track or something similar where the brakes will actually clamp down on the wheel that does not have traction to force the other one to rotate and hopefully get you out of a sticky situation not as effective as a locker but still better than nothing so right now i'm in rear wheel drive and it is ridiculously easy to get loose man ridiculously easy which i mean i think everybody could expect that you know trucks are known for fishtailing right i'm not giving it any effort dude i'm just on the gas spinning the wheel a little bit 
I mean, it's pretty easy, but super easy to lose traction. It's kind of fun to do that, though. I'm going to do that again. I think it's going to be a lot harder in all-wheel drive to do as tight of a circle because the front wheels are going to be pulling me at the same time. For this, all I got to do is just give it some gas. I could almost do like on a dime. I do have brand new tires and there's like almost no snow on the ground. It's pretty much slush at this point. So, you know, I get traction a little easier than you might expect. And I definitely couldn't do this on dry ground because <laughs> I just don't think this truck could do it. Maybe, but I don't think so. But you know, I just got to give it a little extra gas and... Did you guys break? <laughs> Good. See, you can get sideways. All right, now I'm going to put it in all-wheel drive. Hopefully that's not a cop pulling up right there. Um, and uh, we'll see if I can get as tight of a circle. We'll see how that goes. Just see, notice... It's going to be a lot more difficult for me to initiate because the front wheels, they're pulling. So it's going to try to keep me in a straighter line, which technically for stability is what you want. So showing you guys the difference between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive isn't going to be very effective out here in these snowy conditions because all-wheel drive is sufficient enough to provide traction on a level surface like this, even with the slipperiness of the snow and ice. But in an off-road scenario where maybe you have uneven terrain, that's when you really start to see all-wheel drive has its limitations. Four-wheel drive really starts to shine in off-road uneven terrain. So there's really no point in doing a four-wheel drive launch here because it's going to be the same thing as all-wheel drive. You're going to see it pretty much do the exact same thing and it's going to be hard to differentiate between the two. The main thing I wanted to show here today guys was how the Multimatic transfer case works and kind of show the differentiation between the Multimatic transfer case, the other transfer cases available in the third gen, and just a tiny bit of difference in on-road driving. So I hope you guys found this one helpful. I had a lot of fun making it. Um, so remember, don't use four-wheel drive on pavement. Have fun, be safe, stay warm, and I will catch you in the next one.